in charge of all technology. <laughs> Karen is the president of the Harrison County, or excuse me, Historical Society of Harrison County, and author of a book that's coming out soon called Journey Along the Blue River. She's also the star of a hit YouTube series of videos on Harrison <laughs> County. Look those up. They're really fun to watch. Uh, but with no further ado, we thank you for coming. And Karen, we love to hear about the Blue River. All right, let's do this. Uh, I live in White Cloud, so y'all know where that is. My kids are the, my grandkids are the eighth generation of the Rosengarter Farm, right there above in Devil Devil, there above Fountain. So we're not too. We're not too far away, and I did break the papers of all the things that we got going on. It's our 20th anniversary. We've always had a historical society, but it wasn't quite as active as we are right now. So sit back and enjoy the ride. This is the tip of the iceberg, but it's loosely um, based on the book. It's, I, today's my birthday. I'm 67 today, and uh, got the lot, got the final proof for me to proofread. So I'm looking forward to that and uh, had a big bowl that we're getting restored and he called me and said i got it done for your birthday and i got the leaves off of mountain church today off the roof so i feel like i've accomplished <laughs> a lot on this birthday i'm telling you you all love bluebells as much as i do i am sure so when i was thinking about the book of course it's overwhelming to think but i thought what are the categories that i feel like i can shed a little bit of light it is not the comprehensive big thing it's like this one which i did the fair book i said you're getting rid of my book and this one's actually 64 pages and that one's going to be 96 pages but it'll look like that it has a uh, the cover you're meandering down blue river you're starting up in washington county and you're coming all the way down so it's pretty cool so i have an introduction in there uh, I have some historic accounts that people wrote. I, I visit all the small towns along the river. Talk a lot about the mills, because guess what? I'm a road rock descendant, so you know what? We like our mills. Um, talk a little bit about the bridges. That's mostly sad, because all those great jumping bridges are gone. Uh, share information about outdoor adventures. Then I even put some of those studies in there. Remember back when they were doing all those, oh, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do that, and some of it happened, some of it didn't, but I did feel like a secret agent man reading those. And then some uh, conclusions. So here's how I like, I always like to start. Think about it. Like to get away from it all, commune with nature, fish, float in an inner tube, meditate, swim, kayak, ice skate, wait in the water, relax. Camping campgrounds, get baptized, skip rocks, picnic, tree hug, splash, row a John boat, bird watch, paddle your own canoe, well me too. Well guess what? Blue River has it all. And you know continuing research provides evidence that the flow of life is enhanced by contact with water. So being a river red is a good thing. The water's fine. So we're going to begin with this quote. Uh, about along Blue River. This comes from Wind in the Willows, sort of like the Hobbit kind of a book, but the little animals and it's great fun. And the speaker is Ratty the Muskrat. And this is, I could have written this, I didn't, but this is how I feel about it. Believe me, my young friend, he's talking to the mole who doesn't know anything about the river. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. Simply messing about in boats or with boats, in or out of it doesn't matter. Nothing really seems to matter, that's the charm of it. Whether you get away or whether you don't, whether you arrive at your destination or whether you reach somewhere else, whether you never get anywhere at all, you're always busy. And you never do anything in particular, and when you've done it, there's always something else to do, and you can do it if you like, but you're much better not. So that's my childhood right there. We messed in that river. I mean, we messed. It certainly wasn't like it was today. Today, you get turned into CPS, let your kids play all day from uh, daylight till nighttime, but we just did it. So that's the thing from the Crawford County Library showing some men messing about in boats, might be some of your ancestors. This is a big cleanup that we have on Blue River. I can't quite say it's annual because the river doesn't always cooperate, but. Uh, we got a fleet of kayaks. Most of those are mine, yeah. And uh, we had a kayak Bible school one year. Okay, and 
and, and you know, look at them little guys. That's that's my son Isaac. That's the second one. And some old stuff you probably know. Roger Glides. I was married to Roger for a while, and that's that's our son, and he loves messing about just as much as we do. So this is not that necessarily <coughs> research project. There's a lot of research in the book too, but it just talks about just the adventure of having that right in our backyard. So Blue River starts up in Washington County, then it comes down to Harrison and Crawford County. I love these maps. They're, those are George Opal maps, and I use them on a lot of stuff. There's the Blue River watershed, just to give you an idea how many thousands of acres it takes in. And the point I always emphasize, you guys, there are public access points. Who wants the state cops coming and getting you because you pulled? It's not like it used to be. When I was a kid, you just pulled off. But now, you can put in in Milltown. You can go to Growth Rocks Mill, one of the many Growth Rocks Mills. Uh, you can put it in Blue River Chapel. You can still get in the water at State Stop, but boy, you got to carry your canoe or your kayak a long way to have access. Get in at the Iron Bridge and certainly at the mouth of Blue River. So, you know, I always try to encourage people, yes, you can access the river, but 90% of the property is, is private property. So, um, this just kind of shows you how, when they were doing those studies, how they had divided it. From Fredericksburg down, that's scenic. If you've ever been up in there, that's pretty wild woolly up there, I'm telling you. And then next comes recreational. Then... This blows you away, but below Milltown, that's where you see the most. That's where you see the most wildlife, and, and you most away, even though you're closest to the big one of the biggest towns. And then down on my end is a recreational stuff, and that just kind of gives you an idea that that's sort of how it can be can be broken down. And of course, it gets kind of confusing up in Washington County because there's three forks. And I know people that have put in on this fork thinking they're going to end up on here. I'm going to pass it. It doesn't work that way. Those forks come together. But when you get down to Harrison and Crawford, there's only one way. You can't get lost if you stay in the river and go with the flow. So personally, we prefer people don't get out. We live in Devil's Elbow. We prefer they don't get out because you've got to climb all the way up this steep bank. And then you get up there and you know where. You know what I mean? There's nowhere to go. So, uh, what was it? About three years ago, we had, I mean, you would have thought it was a, a terrorist scene or something. We had all kinds of, because this girl had flipped over up by Shark Town, and then she got out, and she came up, and she was in the cornfields, and she went back down to the river again, and uh, it's just saying it was, it was hard, we had a hard time getting out. So, there's a lot of things around here that are named for Blue River. Okay, like this is my Blue River, my famous Blue River All-Stars. I y'all won't believe this, but I've been a leader for 49 years, and I'm only 50 years old. No, I already told you I'm 50. <laughs> All right, that's all right. Blue River France Meeting House. I just put a few of the things that are named for the Blue River. There even was a Blue River town. It's up in Washington County, and uh, pretty much you're looking at it. It's in an abandoned store called Shorty's, and there was a little church that used to be there, and there was a cemetery, and that's about it. So, uh, as I said, this, uh, my second category was historic accounts, and I just dug through and found most of these people were not coming and saying, oh, we're here to explore the Blue River. They just mentioned the Blue River, incidentally, as they were passing from one place to the other. I uh, guess what William Cobbett said, June 21st, floating down the river without anything in particular occurring. Now, that's my kind of day. Absolutely. Here's a reading from the Gazetteer of the United States, 1853. Blue River in the southern part of Indiana is a fine mill stream which rises in Washington County and flowing southwesterly falls into the Ohio at Leavenworth. And so you can see everybody noticed it. And they didn't all come up with like the growth rocks. They didn't all settle there, but a lot of people noticed it. And I love this. I don't know if you guys can see that. But the way Blue River is spelled on the map, B-L-E-W. <laughs> it is what it is. Now everybody wants to know all about the Bears and Blue River. Well, I I always hate to bust everybody's bubble, but it's not our Blue River. It's the Blue River you see when you're going to Indianapolis up there, right by Edinburgh, Franklin, Henry County, and that's where it was actually located. But it's still an okay 
It's still an okay story. It's pretty violent for um, probably, how do I say it? It's not, I want to say snowflakes, but most parents wouldn't want to read it to them. But, you know, I read that girl and told her my kids, so what can I, what can I say? But it's kind of an exciting story. And there's the two heroes. And now this is an amazing book. And amazing. I don't know if you guys got it here or not, but it's called Traveling the Blue. It was by Ruth Metzger Hickman. And she, uh, for the uh, centennial, uh, Tuscaloosa Centennial in 1966, she and her two, two daughters got up this plan. Now, I was giving this for a group of Purdue, Purdue Extension educators, and one of them came up and told me she was along on that adventure. She was the daughter. She hated every minute of it. So we're pretty much mom's baby. But anyway, they did it. They put it in Salem. Now think about that, 1966. There ain't no cell phones, and cell phones don't work uh, in most of our places anyway. But uh, they put it in Salem. We went all the way down to the mouth of the Ohio. So it's pretty cool. I I just went into New Albany and, and just sat there and, and read the thing. But now, we've been talking about digitizing. I, you know, all these Senecans, so I have it digital. So that's just their plan for their boat. The boat was called the Ruth Aline, and they have lots of misadventures, for sure. My third category is small towns with incidental things in between. So there we are, Salem, working our way down, and I just put in some pictures of things that make that make you say Salem. I love that. I love that mural on the side. There's a couple stores South Boston. And Canton, South Boston. There's a lot. That that store wasn't open, was it, Bobby? Is that the no. one? Is that one? No, that I'm maybe on Saturday night, maybe the Amish store around in one of them buildings. But yeah, yeah that's right. there's a lot of Amish. Yeah, there. a lot of Amish. That's that's who we get to fix our barns or you know whatever. The Amish from up South Boston, and that was Canton, and it was open. We thought we'd get some ice cream. Well, it was. It, they were in there playing Yahtzee, and there wasn't any food or anything like that. It was a sewing repair shop. Something, yeah. something like Everybody's that. In there, yeah. But I do want to mention this. Um, across the road are those uh, John Hunt Morgan markers. Well, they're terrible. They're not the it, 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 historical. They're that plastic stuff. So well, I'm fiber, always. I think they made them up fiberglass. Yeah, and they fiberglass. Get made really bad. So every group I talk to, I say, hey, do you want to join me in this quest so we can redo those things? Because they're really well done. You wouldn't have to re research. The data's all good. It's just. They use the wrong kind of material, so they're all stretched up. Uh, there's Pekin. Pekin has the oldest. Uh, they've been old, they've been at it since 1830, having that big party there in the in the park. And I just I love that roadside railroad mill. And that's pretty much what Pekin uh, is. Pekin and New Pekin. There's some historic pictures from Pekin. And then our next town that we come to, and you gotta realize again. Those are on different branches because we've got three branches up in Washington County. Made it to Fredericksburg. And I love that sign down on the lower right hand corner. They've um, recycled that sign. They're at Fredericksburg and the cemetery's there. But actually, Fredericksburg is not an official town, it has been disincorporated. I would just love to spend some time with these guys. These are the Blue River Entertainers from Fredericksburg, and they entertained it. That Harrison County Fair and all up and down the river. There's our familiar Old Mill Canoe Rental at Fredericksburg. Been there a long time. And so the, the idea was that I would get in at Fredericksburg. Me and Bobby got in at Fredericksburg. And you know, usually it's just me and Bobby or me and, me and somebody just paddling them along. Well, this is where I got to see how people from the city think the river's going to be. You know, they'd be like, oh, I can't get surfing. Oh, I lost myself. Oh, I've got to, I'm going to get out the next, well, there ain't no next. There is nowhere to get out. You know what I'm saying? And, and sometimes, and I talked with a lady at, at Cape Country, and I said, we just got to do better so that they understand that there, this is not the lazy river at Holiday World. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be wild and woolly. But this was one of our adventures. This was Memorial Day weekend. So it was an interesting study for us as well. Now we made it down to Milltown, which was originally Leavenworth Mills, and I am a descendant of the Leavenworth as well, because I married in with the Rose Rocks. Um, so there's a picture of how it looks today. We always called that green stuff snakeweed. Bobby called it turtle grass. 
but it's really American watermelon. And I guess it's probably invasive because it's everywhere, I'll say that for sure. This is G.J. Parker. Now, this is just a little, little commercial. We Last year, we had a concert over on the banks of Blue River at Cape Country uh, Canoes, and it was great until it blew away. But G.J. Parker, this this um, Sunday night, will be on American Idol. They've been on one. She's playing the piano, so she's like an account, the accompanist, and then she's accompanying a girl from Southern Bird named Kennedy Reed. Look it up. It, it's a real hoot. And I never watched American Idol. I couldn't tell you anything about it, except that's pretty cool. And so they're in Hollywood. Be, I think they'll be in Hollywood this time. And then I know they go to Hawaii, so I'm not so nervous that they might get uh, might get voted, voted off. But anyway, she went to school with me, and she does a good job playing that piano. And there's a, she, one could, of the, she can light that thing on fire. Jerry Lee Lewis. Um, <laughs> Yeah, she does great balls of fire, just lights that made up. So, hey, what I was telling you about is that natural stretch from Milltown, that's where you really get away from. Every once in a while, um, you'll hear somebody mowing the grass, but other than that, here it is like, um, um, No interstate. Where we're at, we hear the interstate. That's one of the, down there where we're at, you hear the interstate all the time. So there's one of our returning bald eagles. And a sycamore tree, and there's a blue heron taking flight. So this is all just in that little stretch. I don't know if any of you guys are kayakers, but if you are, this is a great, great opportunity. And I realize a lot of people are never going to see the interstate. So that little red flower, that's over by Lauren Bowles' house, uh, farm. We used to do the back over there. And I never could find out what that was. And then we went to uh, Washington, D.C., and there it was, Cardinalis lobelia. So I got an identification. There, when, when you say Rose Art Mail, this is the one most people think of. You know, it's a public access site and things like that. that but there were actually two more Rose Art Mails up the river and three more down the river. Are so, any of those still around? No. Nope. This is the last one. It went down in 1986. Right. And uh, well, based on my research, um, what really did a lot of these old mills in was the groundhogs. Now, as long as people were there, the groundhogs weren't so active. But as soon as they shut up, even if they just, you know, you would just think, okay, we're done, but we're not going to open it anymore. But that's okay. It can just stand here. But it won't because there's nobody there to keep those pesky groundhogs. I would say that one before DNR took it down, and the uh, the shaft was still turning, because they had the turbine, not the big wood wheel, they had the metal turbine wheel, and it, we was in there, and they, that shaft was just sitting there turning. And the thinking behind why it couldn't be saved was this was not the original mill. This one had been built later on in the early 1900s, so. It broke our heart, I promise you. This is a pretty cool little place. If you go over that way, just below Rosecrans Mill, this guy named Gibbs Wiseman had built a little shelter there. It's, I don't, sure, we didn't have to pay rent or anything, and we had picnics, 4 uh, H meetings, and just all kinds of things there. And it was called, uh, now there's a bunch of little camps and things along in there too. And there used to be a sign, some of you might remember it. Today the sign just says Blue River Village. But back then it said, because most of the city people come out for camps, it says Blue River Village, population four, <laughs> except weekends. Yeah, and that was absolutely, absolutely true. Now, this is a uh, shark town. It, it's peaceful today, but I'm telling you, in the book, I've got a picture of shark town, and there's just all kinds of houses and buildings and factories and all kinds of crazy stuff. And, you know, most of the mills, when the uh, idea of a party mill came out. You know how now, oh, I gotta have the latest iPhone. I don't know, I still have the flip phone, but I gotta have the latest. But buddy, when those party mills came out, everybody had to put those in because everybody was one of them. This is one of our favorite pictures. This is, this is right there below Shark Tab. Look at all those turtles. I think there's 22 of them. And I, now, now, listen, I saw all of them and I went off to my name's my, my maiden name was Harmon. So we're, we're from that little neighborhood too. And I said, Bob, get the camera, get over here, stop down at Shark Tank, and the turtles were still there. So it must have been a day like today. So it's all good. 
There's Harrison Spring, it's the largest tributary in private property. That's Isaac again there, peeking out of the corner. And this is where William Henry Harrison, and he's going, oh, you're going through that spill. Yeah, but William Henry Harrison actually owned four pieces of the property, but in Harrison County, and that's why it's named Harrison County. But this, he had an entire section. He had 640 acres there. Had a log cabin, had a grist mill. And yes, I can remember seeing those timbers down in the water. That's just, that's crazy to me. People always get it mixed up. They think it's the one down at the mouth of Harrison Spring, but it's not. It was on up, on up river. And there he is. Now, when he ran for president, he gone on North Bend. I gave you a whole program on North Bend. That was great. Oh, you saw it the other night. One. That's right. We had a good time. Um, but he had moved on to North Bend. Ohio, and, uh, but our Spencer Township property was the last piece that he sold in 1817. And our little church where I preach every Sunday is actually built on the foundation stones of William Henry Harrison's still house. How great is that? The bishop's like, what are you talking about? I said, no, this is it. We're just very, very resourceful. And of course, the UM is no longer in effect. We're not United Methodist. But I guess that sign still, our sign still says that. We're doing that. So this is the junction where uh, Harrison Spring, that's the muddy part. This was last spring, last April when we got on big storm. And it's emptying into Blue River. And this is the site of the Abram Road Rock. And he's the guy that built it up and built, put the benches in. And uh, I just think this would be an interesting thing sometime. All these little towns. And that place where the Abram Road Park Snow was was called Clefka. And they all had these little baseball teams. And they traveled all over the place. You know, you just think, who put that together? And you can always tell my grandpa, he's the one down on the left. This is my used line, and he always making them groupies. So I can always find my grandpa anyway in, that, in those pictures. This is the mysterious gauge. I'm 67. I have never seen a person go into that gauge or come out of that gauge or do anything. But it measures and collects water data. You can get on the internet and type in uh, white cloud gauge and it, it's operational today. It will tell you what the depth of the water is. And it goes back to, I think, 1968. Not as far back as I go, but back to 68. And then there's another Blue River gauge up at uh, Frederick. So it was just always that little mysterious little sentinel sitting there. And then, of course, what, what has changed things more than anything? The interstate. When I was in college at IUS, uh, our professor, Dr. Finley, said, well, you need to research some kind of local something. So I did Cattle Manufacturing Company. I did Wyandotte Cave. But Fred Griffin, who was our county historian, said, the interstate. Nothing has affected your world and my world like the interstate. But thank God we didn't get an exit at White Cloud. Oh my gosh. I, I can't even stand to think about it. But like Bobby says, we're up above Fountain. We're anxious for the leaves to come back on. When the leaves are back on, you can't hear it so loud. But anyway, it's right there just up river from the 62 bridge. And then the gauge is just a little bit farther beyond that. There it is. How many of you been to White Cloud? I mean, it's just like, here it is, coming right out of time. There it is. There's the pumps. There's a dog barking, I promise you. And um, That road loops around. So if your GPS takes you to the first road, and you come to dead ends, and you haven't seen the store, you go back on 62, like you come to Levensworth, and get on the other side of Harrison Springs. That, that goes to White Cloud, and you go down, that's where you see the store and, and all the good stuff. And we were never, uh, we uh, we didn't get the bridge. We were, they took the bridge down, dropped it in the river, the White Cloud Bridge, so that's why you can't drive through. I mean, 62 pretty much made White Cloud obsolete, but boy, when you took our bridge away, like Bobby said, that it's too complicated to get down there. But this was founded by William Rose Rock, who was also from the uh, wind out road rocks, and that would be my great great grandpa. And so I'm sitting out here on the, the I all, we also have the Historical Society has a log cabin at 419 North Capitol Avenue. I 
I'm always glad to take people through it. I'm just sitting out there, you know, one day on the porch, and somebody says, hey, you want a you want a plaque off of the White Cloud Bridge? I said, yeah, I sure do. So me and Bobby went down and got it. So they had dropped it in the river, but they hadn't picked that up. They had just scrapped the rest of it. But uh, this guy, Kurt Davenport, had hired a diver to go get it. So I was hanging on the wall there at the... Uh, he was, the up, he, was strong, he was strong because that thing's about 50 pounds. <laughs> I hung it on the wall. I, I, used, I doubled up the, uh, I didn't use leg bumps. I doubled up deck street, so to, to put it in there. So White Cloud was absolutely the happening place. When Rose Art married Mary Ann McCollum, she named it White Cloud, and a lot of the, uh, the Kellers and the Ellsbys and the wealthy people had camps there at White Cloud. And there's my there's my gang. That's uh, William Rosewell with Russell. Some of you might be remember Russell from that little gas station there on 62 that his son Eldon took it over. And there then the people on the left are standing in front of the house, which then became the Blue River Inn. Okay, so they covered up the logs and they had their they they it was fine dining, fine dining at its best, and we never ever ever. Blue River Inn. But lots and lots of other people, lots of other people did, and you can see they had encased it all, and unfortunately that was one that got torn down as well. And the sign I remember said if you were looking for good cooking, try Blue River Inn. And so a lot of people from Louisville by that time uh, came out for fine dining. I think this is one of Bobby's most amazing pictures. He just caught it just at the right time. That's that little metal pouch. That is completely untouched. That is, I, I just snapped it. That is the picture it took. Um, I've never done nothing in Photoshop to it. It was just an amazing day. It was clear, the clouds there. It just, it's a good picture. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't care what anybody says. I've been all over the world, but that 62 is the prettiest drive in the world. You just look, and there's that river dancing along the side. So there's that. Harrison Crawford line on 62, and how fortunate we are. I don't know how far you guys are, but I could be at the Fourth Street in five minutes. You know what I'm saying? That there you've got that wonderful, wonderful playground, and that's where some of those Blue River millstones, especially from that Philo Crawford mill, have ended up down at the Nature Center along with the Hay Press. Yay. This is where my Rose Rock people are buried. At Blue River Chapel. Now the far back road rocks are down there at Wyandotte, but my grandpa, the one that moved to uh, White White Cloud, he he and his family are buried there. And then I just love that painting. You can just that's up there at Blue River Chapel, and you can just go in there anytime. And then uh, unfortunately, the stage stop can't grind this close, but it actually was a stage stop. You've seen it. Let me see if I got in that, the next picture. No, but they put a picture in. But I've got a picture that just looks like, oh my gosh, you'd have been so ready to get out of the stagecoach. You know what I mean? It was a, it was a real mess. But it was an actual stage stop. Now here's Wanda, and when I started proofreading the book with her, she says, well, I don't know what is that supposed to be. And I said, this is Frank Rothrock up here in the corner, and uh, he was a son of. Washington Rothrock, who was a brother to my grandpa, and he moved to Spokane, Washington, but he actually still owned one day, you know, absentee line from the Lord. So he was a busy man. He was rich and he was busy, so when he wrote wine out, he just abbreviated it. Why and died. Hey, <laughs> so he must have been busy. How many How many have you been through wine out? Okay. And that's the greatest thing in the world, and of course, I did my stint as the as as a tour guide down there, and I got to take out Earl Bannon and Judy and a hundred other people through and do the haunted cave. And I'm wearing a cow pelvis. I saw Dwayne sick the other day. He says, "You remember that time you wore that cape, that uh, pelvis on your head?" I said, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." We had a good time. I really enjoyed working there, and I'm so glad it's back open. You know, now this is the original site. So think of it, it's just the opposite of the river. Everything else pretty much flows this way, but the Rose Rocks didn't do it that way. They came down from the falls of the Ohio, came up 
the Blue River, settled at Wyandotte, and then moved on upriver. Okay, so they would have been going against the flow of the river, but it worked out. And there's the original site of the Peter Rothrock Mill. And there's the original mail. She's like, well, I, you know, this, have you got a better picture? I'm saying, oh my gosh, I'm so darn lucky to even have that. So that's the original Peter Rothrock mill. So you can actually go and see those rocks? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, you ain't never been down there? You just never used, been there. You go past the cemetery. Well, yeah. It's you a go cemetery. past the cemetery and then just, just hop by on down. By the cemetery, yeah, you park the cemetery and walk over. Now, by, Karen, back that up for just a minute. The... A lot of the rocks on the upper part of the screen is still so showing. There's a lot of soot settling over them because the Ohio River has been brought up to a depth of minimum depth of nine foot for the barges. So it spends more time backwater there than it used to. I don't know when Karen took that picture. She was in college. That was back a minute, a minute or two ago. And then she took that picture there. That was her picture right there. She took. So the broke rock settled there. But they didn't care nothing about the cave. If you've been on my church, you know all about this. But it was a nuisance to them. Cows went in there trying to look at, at some salt. People got lost in there. They were interested in the timber. So for better and worse, the Roth Rock settled there. That's the Roth Rock Cemetery. Peter Roth Rock, the Revolutionary War soldier, he, he's buried there along with some of the kids. And some of them, like I said, the Blue River. One of them, uh, Uncle Andrew's buried over here. They wish you out. What is it called? The Land Land Cemetery. He's buried in the Land Cemetery. And there's Blue River Island. You might remember Blue River Island, and now it's gone. And, and here was one of our claims to fame because my grandpa Hughes worked for the forestry, and he always told us he helped make the Indian Hill. So we just thought that was the greatest thing. Now, uh, I won't even say which side, but it all depended on who had the governor whether grandpa had a job or not. You know, we're just little kids. We couldn't really understand that. What do you mean? Well, if certain groups in, we don't have a job. We get back in, then we will. And um, there we are at the coal property down there near the mouth of Blue River. That's my dad, the original river rat, Paul Harmon. And he, uh, I don't know how your all's retirement's going, but he enjoyed his retirement just as much as I enjoyed my retirement. They, uh, they went down there all the time. And they mushroom hunted, and he grew watermelons and just loved it. But he loved that river, and he always wanted to drive over around that circle, Blue Rock Mill, because that was just his little stomping ground. And there's an aerial view of Leavenworth, and there's the button works. And I'm really working on this. I think this will be exciting. I saw her over at the field, this girl named Kristen Fleming. She now got her PhD, and I'm trying to get her to come and do a program about um, muscling on the river. I, I said that the other day, and then I thought, oh good, you're going to, you know, talk about um, uh, how we can build muscles back up. I said, well, really, this is more about how the muscles got into the mess that, that it is. But she's really interested in seeing the button factors, so I'm hoping I can swing her. Now, here we come to uh, row numeral number four. These are some of the males. I wish I could say I got a picture of every male in a location, but, you know, you guys, anybody's done books, you just realize at some point you just have to say, let's go. So this is Be Bex Mill, uh, first mill up there in, in uh, Washington County. It's beautiful, great stuff. Uh, the one on the right is called Oregon Springs Mill, and that's just the same kind of thing I was talking about with the groundhogs. You know, they were there for a reunion, and then just nobody else was there, so they moved on in. There's the Philo Road Park Mill then. And when somebody asks about is there anything to see there, there it is. The pillars are still, pillars are still there. And it is property of the state and it is a public access site. So, you know, we're excited about that. There we are the road, uh, at the White Cloud Mill. We're standing by William Road Rock. And uh, that's one of the stencils. Yeah, that's one of the stencils that uh, uh, one of my friends was able to get. That was a poster I did, just telling you, showing you all those mills along, along Blue River. And I wish I could say, yeah, they're they're all intact. No, none of them have come and gone. Uh, the next category I'd like to talk about is the bridges, and they have just come and gone. 
I don't remember back to the covered bridges, but there was a covered bridge at Fredericksburg. That one's open to traffic, although last time we were up there, they were working on it. So I guess it's like the Sherman Minton, you know what I'm saying? You never know. <laughs> you never know how it's going to be. But um, there's the Totten Ford. I love that one. I love when the trucks come across and you know, nah, 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 nah. And there's the amazing Rope Rock Mill Bridge. Some of you may remember it's our link with Snake Hill and, and Crawford County. And uh, like I said, my dad always wanted to go over there. And I was over there one day. He went with me. And, and I said, hey, Daddy, <laughs> they're pulling up the boards on this. Because they kept telling us, we're going to replace it, but we're going to keep it for a walking bridge. Well, who's going to walk across the bridge and walk up Snake Hill? I mean, get real. You know what I mean? Or come all the way down Snake Hill just to walk across. It, it, we were suspicious from the beginning, and you can kind of see down in the corner there there's a, uh, what it looks like now. But anyway, they took the bridge off, set it there in my cousin's field for years, for years, and it paid rent. And then finally, I think he said, hey, guys, get this out of my field. And then I had forgotten this, but it was due to my, I did that looking back in the Democrat and. Uh, it was talking about take dismantling this bridge, taking it to the recycle center, but they didn't recycle it. They just set it there. And then now it's there at um, on the Indian Creek Trail that goes through Hazelwood Park there in court. So, you know, it's messing, messing with history. I, I'm with Indiana Longmarks. The, the preferable place is leave them where they are because that really tells the story. Once you take it out, it changes it. But, the alternative of having it dropped in the river is, uh, I'm glad they did it. Here's one you guys may recognize, the amazing Breeding Bridge there, Coles Ford. And there's Dry Run Bridge, what a great little place. In the next section, I couldn't begin. I could do a whole series of books about disasters along the river. So if I don't mention your disaster, just know it was more like just a little survey. Here's some of the things. Uh, that happened. This was the Meltdown flood in 1996. Yeah, it was pretty wild that year. There's Fredericksburg, and pretty much that's why Fredericksburg decided to disincorporate because <laughs> they're underwater all the time. There it is, just kissing the 462 bridge. Everybody going to the forestry. That was 2008. That's that. That is a tall. That's a tall, a long distance from there to the water level today. That's how much the river was up. And it was rubbing the bottom of the bridge. And Bobby, it, is that when you were working at Jazz Bridge? And, yeah. And so Bobby was coming down the hill to go to well, everything was flooded. Let's just say we took the kayaks inside the church and paddled. The benches, this is found now. The benches were flipped over. I mean, it was just like that. Yeah, it sure was. But we, uh, we got busy, and it was right before April Easter, 20. wasn't it? It's right before Easter. April 20th. Yes. April 20th. So we sent Marcia. We sent Marcia up to where'd you go? Home Depot. And she bought some of that red, that red paper like you put down. Oh. And we had church Easter Sunday. And then who was it? Somebody got under there and looked and said, Oh my gosh. There was no floor left. You know what I'm saying? The red paper was hopeless. Was holding us up. Good thing we didn't have a big crowd. Yeah, yeah, used to have carpet, and when they pulled the carpet up, there was I knew there was some some spots when they pulled the carpet up, we're like, there's not much we left to stand on. So we got our back home and we got the Amish people, and we're still we're still going strong. There's Leavenworth flood. Some of you might remember that, probably not, but we sure heard enough about it. Here's a great thing that happened at Slab Town. My Aunt Mildred went down there and got a picture of this because uh, this truck driver was going across the Slab Town Bridge, which is right there where it goes. The spring comes in and that wheel dropped through. So that was the biggest news. That was the biggest news in the in the year. And the, the other one talks about for sure Roth Rock and Babcock. Now the Roth Rocks, if it wasn't a Roth Rock mill, the Roth Rocks quickly uh, married somebody from that family. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there was a Babcock, Babcock sharks and things like that. So they married into it. But this is where they were bringing these two flatboats down, uh, loaded with lumber, happened in 1875, and it, it got completely completely wrecked. I was just reading something the other day about how dangerous it was uh, at Rolf Rock's Mill and the other mills in this, uh, out in the water and trying to jump from log to log and all that stuff. Then we did have a little bit along the Blue River of White Cappy. I'm not 
not saying it was your ancestors or my ancestors. I'm just saying it, uh, it happened. There was a lot of it going on. And actually, the first loss of life in a white cap incident in Harrison County was up in Blue River Township, up that place where I told you it's wild and woolly. It was wild and woolly back then, too. And uh, one of the white caps got shot, and the guy they were trying to white cap ended up dying as well. And of course, there were lots of diseases. Uh, and then this little fellow named John Hunt Morgan came through and he really uh, went after Salem. There was a skirmish near Pekin and there was this little uh, high grade as well. And then some of you may remember this, Blue River Cafe burned twice. And then they said, forget it, it's not gonna work. There's that American water willow I was telling you about and the number one tree you'll see is sycamore trees. Uh, Another big adventure we're getting involved with is uh, trying to bring back the hellbenders. And you know, we were down at um, Evansville the other day at the zoo, and that's where they hatch them out. I don't know how much y'all know about hellbenders, but it's the largest North American um, salamander, and they hatch them out down there, and then they bring them here and turn them loose in Blue River. And why is it they can make it in Blue River? Because Blue River's clean enough they can survive. They're not going to make it in a polluted stream. So uh, it's what you call an indicator species. If the hellbenders can live in it, then it's in pretty good shape and the hellbenders can make it. So that's me back there holding the, holding the bucket and uh, we had a big hellbender release. You can see the rope art mill there, uh, bridge in the background. And it was what they called a soft release. He said, sometimes we just take them, but this one, they kind of put them in a nursery. So you went down there with Nick and you put it down in the thing and in a box, like in a box, yeah, like a little incubator nursery kind of thing. It'll look like a, a bee or a pea. It depends. If you see one in the water, that's what they are. Uh, they look like a, a pea or a bee, whatever you, uh, whichever angle you're looking at it. And there have been confirmed sightings from that release, so that's pretty exciting. There and I have new babies. Yeah. And there we are farming in the elbow and you know of course along blue river when i was a kid everybody was farming now not so much but uh, there's a cornfield there at both rock smell and boy when you get up in washington county along blue river you got some big old fields up there i'm telling you uh somebody might remember hearts and how about that snag with snapper where did we catch him i can't remember look at him he's he not only did he have his house on his back he's got his whole garden in his <laughs> On his back. Anybody remember the canoe ra races? Anybody take part in the canoe races? I did this one time and one guy was there and I said, well, did you win? No, I got second. I said, oh, well, that's okay. That's still pretty good. You must have finished. Now, here comes the Wild Rivers National Study. I know you guys have that here in this facility. You have that White Act Caves, Harrison Crawford, and Blue River. But before that, kind of the instigator for that the National Wild and Scenic River System came in and did this mega study about whether Blue River would be a big foot, a good fit for this national program. Now, think how different our lives would be. You got the interstate, we'd be the Yellowstone. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I know you can't stop progress, but I'm kind of glad we didn't we didn't get accepted into into that national because then you had the federal people telling you what to do. We get fed up with the state people, but now you got the national people telling you what to do. So we did not meet the criteria. There were like five criteria and it, it only met two of them. But their classic closing statement was, look at it for the state. You know, it's not really national significance. George Washington didn't swim here or, you know, something like that. But it certainly is a value for interpreting the state history and things like that. So they encourage the state to look at it for state recognition. Uh, and then they did a thing called the Shelley study in 1968, big plans, just all kinds of amazing things that were, that were going to happen. And uh, then they did, most of them did not, by the way. And they always made the mistake of saying one word. Anybody know what it was? Easement. Oh, you're talking. You're talking fighting words now. When they when they started when they slipped in that easement, people got all uh, all wrapped up. But in 1974, they did a scenic river study. Blue River was named as Indiana's first scenic river. And as I said, there was a controversy over easements. 
Franco Bannon always said, you know, he was in politics a long time, but he said nothing compared to the controversy over over this river and how it was going to be. Everybody wanted the same thing. They wanted the river to be protected, but then their ideas of how that could be uh, were different. So I'll just read you a few of the headlines. Uh, John Flint said, uh, any other plans for Blue River stirs controversy. Now, I think that's an understatement. I believe the meeting at North Harrison, there were like 500 people there. Yeah, can you imagine? Uh, landowners began organizing opposition to the state's plan for conserving Blue River because the landowners didn't like that idea of easements. Landowner state officials differ on the best way to preserve Blue River. And then entered the Blue River Commission. It was created in 1978. The state of Indiana charged the Blue River Commission with preserving the natural integrity of Blue River component of the Indiana Natural River System. And this stretches from Lyle 57 up here by Fredericksburg to River Mile 11.5. And, and which is not all the way down to the Ohio, seven miles up from there. And the strip of land along each side of the river. Blue River is the only scenic Indiana River which has a river commission. And so there's two representatives from Washington, two representatives from Crawford, two representatives from Harrison. I asked people to send in some memories, so I'm just going to read a few memories here. The wonderful Blue River. Now, this is up at Fredericksburg, so another part of the world. The river's quite different up there. I love this, though. After learning to swim, my brothers and I began our adventures down the hill, past the barn to Blue River. What a pleasant retreat. We cut the weeds around our swimming area. It didn't take us long to get acquainted with nettle, also known as fireweed or stingweed. We called it itchweed. Anybody else had the pleasure of being an itchweed? Yeah. If you brushed against it with your bare legs, it set you on fire with a terrible hot itchiness. We would bound back into the cool river water for relief. Here's a reflection on the old swimming hole at Milltown by a Milltown boy entitled down by the old mill stream. This was written in 1962. To our right below, below the mill were the roots, a shallow swimming spot for youngsters like us. To the left, above the mill, was the deeper part of the river, where the better swimmers could race from the dam to the pier upon which our title, our little bridge sits. Our greatest ambition was to be allowed to swim above the mill. Now, people won't even know what we're talking about, but, you know, when I was a kid, what a rite of passage it was when you jumped off that bridge, okay? And for us, it was White Cloud Bridge or Rose Rocks Mill Bridge. And so, if he's a real weenie, you might hang by your hands and drop. I never did that. I mean, come on. How do you live with that? <laughs> and the next level up would be you jumped off the floor. The next level would be you dived off the floor. No way. The next level would be you jumped off the top, and I never knew anybody that dived off the top. And you know, once these mills started being, these uh, dams started going out, <laughs> you couldn't jump off any of them now, the water's like this. But back then, it was up to your hands, so that was a rite of passage for us. For some reason, we connected this graduation with strength and courage. So the mill was the dividing line between childhood and manhood. Because you can never go back. So I did bring, where's my little miniature inner tube? Yeah, look at that. And I understand such a teeny inner tube. I'm telling you, one time we went to, uh, where we go, White Cloud, I guess, to uh, uh, Blue River. And how, what was it? Three of us hit the same, hit the same thing and popped our inner tubes. It was the, oh, it's like, everybody, don't come on this side anymore. So um, canoe. Kayak, tube, or boat, just be sure that it will float. And that girl I was telling you about that we rescued, I don't mean it was this small, but it was one of those blow up tubes. Yeah. A little plastic, pink. plastic, pull, yeah. or pull, a yeah. plastic one. Yeah. And, and yeah. whoever she was with abandoned her, it was just, you know, uh, it was something else. And they, so, go ahead. No, they, they got there at the elbow, they got, she wrecked hers on our side. And they got 
they got down there to the other side and, and got swept to the other side and was afraid to get going on down river. So they was on the other side of the river. The river was up like about four it foot. Crazy. Yeah, that was one of those days that came after a fest. My, my daughter-in-law was here from, uh, she's from India. You know, most times nothing's happening on Devil's Over. <laughs> she's like, is it always like this? <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's not at all. Uh, this was a, Henry Coates wrote a really nice little uh, summary in Outdoor Indiana in, the, in 1960. He said, with a paddle or a paddle, a float trip is coming. Needless to say, the trip was interesting and enjoyable. For those canoeists who want a stream with natural beauty and good fishing, Blue River should be at the top of the list. And it certainly is on mine. Uh, this is by the late Jim Sprandall, uh, who was uh, Hoosier Canoe and Kayak Club, a jewel in Southern Indiana. Blue River is a treasure by Greg Zeller, former Indiana Attorney General. I just took this one off the online, but I like it. Best river trip in the state. Come all the way from Texas from that. So, in conclusion, I, as, as I said, the book will be out. You depend on how fast I get it from friends back to them. It'll be in the next month or two. I truly hope you have enjoyed our journey along the Blue River as much as I have. As we recap our trip downstream, went back one here before I started talking. Uh, I began upriver with all those tributaries to Blue River up there in Washington County. And I mean, there's lots and lots of tributaries. And it ended down there at the mouth of Blue River, where it empties into Ohio on its journey toward New Orleans. On our journey, we visited the towns of Salem, Pekin, Belltown, White Cloud, Wyandotte, Leavenworth, and other small towns, along with multiple stops at the access points, mill sites, churches, bridges, and other points of interest along the way. I bet you can tell. Blue River is a big part of my life. I have spent countless hours swimming, fishing, wading, and have kayaked that entire river from Fredericksburg down to the mouth of the Ohio. Not in one trip. We like to say we're not that kind of paddler. We like to take pictures. We like to get out and swim. We like to get out and look for the bad uh Dippers and things like that, where they are, and they're still there. But you can see, uh, this is a kind of a twofold thing. Hopefully, it'll inspire some of you that are still uh, able and interested to get out there and just just look at it. But you know, there's a lot of people that may not ever be able to do that. So by taking the journey with me, you can learn about it. I have reveled in every minute of it. Blue River just is it. I remember reveled in every inch of that, of the journey. However you choose to experience Blue River, take nothing but a minute. Oh, wait, I can't believe I forgot to show you because you guys know I want one. Hey, Roberta, Roberta told me, says, you got any more of those little books? Now, I'm talking, this is 20 years ago, but this is a book that I did for a program, project at IUS, and it shows you the of my books. So, it's a big hit. Now, now that see Bobby, that's what I'm talking about. Right. I, I had a buddy, I had a buddy that worked at the extension office and he had access to all this stuff. And he set this all up for me and printed it in color and it was fabulous. Well guess what? Yeah. If so now I'm like, Bobby, do you think we can so if anybody's got one, if I could find one that's not folded up, I could probably do it. And then on the back, I put another. I'm I'm big on those maps of the blue ribbon. So, so he did he did all the graphics right. and stuff. Karen yeah. folded it up. That's she right. can probably figure out how to do it again. I can fold the books if I can just get the graphics and then I'll make them available along with as well as the book. So however you choose to experience Blue River, take nothing but a memory, leave nothing but a spot.